Welcome everyone to our Sunday worship and uh, if you're curious and don't recognise the scene behind me this is Ruskington Methodist Church that I'm not quite standing in but pretending to stand in through the, the magic of uh, video editing. An opening prayer, let us pray. Lord, we come as we are to become what you meant us to be. We come as we are, broken, afraid and full of disappointment, to be made whole and to be set free. We come as we are with all our plans and all our dreams, our joys and our sorrows, to be touched by your grace and held in your love. We come as we are. There is no other way we can come. We come as we are to praise you, the one who is worthy and the one who is Lord. Lord, you are the source of all life, hope and truth. You are the source of all that is good and right and of value. You are the source of peace, new life and love. And we have come to worship you. Amen. And we're going to sing one of the more recent songs about gathering for worship. Come, now is the time to worship. Our reading this week is the same as the reading from last week because if you remember if you watched last week's video I said then I was going to do this in two parts we looked at the idea of where you come from as a, a concept and that's because there's a lot of uh, occasions in this reading where Jesus talks about where he came from but there's also about where we come from as we come to Jesus. 
it's not so easy to spot, but listen out for it. So I'm reading from John 6, and verse 35, um, and then verse 41 to, 40, to 51. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. At this, the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. I tell you the truth, he who believes has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Thanks be to God for his word. And if you missed last week's video, a very brief recap is that we looked at where Jesus came from. His claim was that he came from heaven. The crowds, or at least some of them listening, felt that that didn't make any sense because they knew where he was from. He was a local lad from a local village. They knew his parents. And I said last time that it didn't have to be either or. It could be both and. And in fact, it's important to know that Jesus came from heaven. He came as the divine saviour, but he also came from earth. He was one of us. He was born amongst us, a very human saviour. And the two are both within the nature of Jesus, and it's vitally important that they are. But what about our coming to Jesus. Where do we come from when we come to Jesus? It might sound an odd question, but there is a, an answer given to us in the words of Jesus. He says two things about this process of coming to him. Firstly, he says, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him. No one can come to Jesus unless they are drawn by God the Father. Okay. But then a little later, he says, everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. So there's a, our clue as to where we come from. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. I've tried to put this in a... A diagram form which I will show you. Now okay I can do clever computer graphics it's not beyond my wit to put this on the screen here we go like this okay I can do that but if I actually hold it up for you I can point to it in a way that I can't point to it so easily when it's filling the screen okay. So this is my diagram which tries to summarise in some logical way what Jesus was saying. He talks about coming to him, and here's Jesus, and I've put a, a loaf of bread in just to show that uh, he is the bread of life. He's the one we come to. But where do we come from? He says those who listen to the Father and learn from him come to him. So... Here we are, this is the group of people who listen to God, 
and learn from him, the L plates. But this is only possible because he says, everyone who comes to me only comes when the Father draws them. So the arrow represents uh, God the Father drawing people towards Jesus. And this sort of makes sense and it sort of answers the question. How do we come to Jesus? Where do we come from? We come from this. We come from already having heard and listened to God the Father and learned from him and, and that then leads us on to Jesus. But I want to challenge this, not in a, um, a, a way of disputing with Jesus. I wouldn't dare do that. But I at least want to challenge, is that right? Have I understood it right? Are you really saying that this is an exclusive thing? Only when we are drawn by the Father can we come to Jesus. And it's these people who are the ones who come to Jesus. So therefore... It's only these people that are drawn to Jesus. Can we not come to Jesus any other way? Do we have to be forced into this particular model? Can we not come from this direction or this direction or any other place where we happen to be? Can we not come to Jesus? In the end, it's a kind of age old question about the difference between predestination and free will is it determined already who will come to Jesus because God the Father draws them he's decided who's going to get there or do we have free choice aren't we able to come to Jesus of our own volition and that debate has been going on for a long time uh, I think these days people tend to go more for the, the free choice and predestination uh, is generally frowned on. But I would suggest that just like the thing I looked at last week, it doesn't have to be either or. It can be both and. Jesus is not like an insurance company. It seems to me if you watch the adverts anyway, that there are two ways to get to an insurance company. One is through a comparison website. There are many of these available to us. Uh, you see them on the adverts. There's the one about comparing meerkats, which has started off as a pun and is going on a very long time. Uh, there is one uh, with the, the, the tenor with his strange moustache, go compare, or something like that. There's the one that I never quite get about being confused.com. But th th there are many comparison websites which will point you onwards and lead you to the actual insurance company. Or... If you know the name of an insurance company, if you've been recommended it or you see an advert for a company directly, then you may just go direct to that company, get on their website, ring them up or whatever. Uh, you don't have to go through the comparison website. There's more than one way to get there. But Jesus is not like that. It's not that Jesus is somehow on his own and coming via God the Father is just one way to get there but everything Jesus does is intimately bound up with what God is doing and what God is planning it's all part and parcel of the same work God the Father is at work always through Jesus and this whole process is such an integral thing that you can't just separate it out if we come to Jesus at all, then it's, it's all part of this. I'm not sure quite whether this analogy works exactly, but hopefully it gives you a bit of a, a hint. I met my wife before I met her father. In fact, I'd known her for a, a few years before I actually met face to face with her father. 
But when I married her, I was also marrying into her family. Not just her father, but her mother and her brother and others as well. But let's just stick with the father because that uh, makes the analogy work. I, I was marrying into a relationship with the father too. And of course, because I do things properly, I did ask his permission before we actually married. And fortunately he said yes. But in a way, the, the contact I had with my wife's father was already present through my contact and my relationship with her because she'd grown up in her father's household. She'd picked up some of his values and his ways of thinking. Admittedly, she didn't always agree with him. I, I acknowledge that. But my point is that um, she was already uh, part and parcel of that family. And although I didn't know the father when I first met her, he was nevertheless influential in who she was and, and a part of our relationship, although I didn't know it. Does that make sense? Not sure. But certainly that is the case with Jesus. Jesus and his father are so intimately connected that however we make any contact with Jesus at all, however we come to him, we, we are experiencing God the Father at work in him. We may not even recognise that. There were many people who came to Jesus just because they saw him as a, a wonder worker or a healer. There are people today who come because they're attracted by his teaching and his morals and his lifestyle and may not necessarily have any strong belief in God. But God is at work in Jesus. He's at work in this whole process. I suppose I should, uh, in brackets, point out that the, the idea of the Trinity means that, that there is the Holy Spirit too. And in one sense, the Holy Spirit is, is at work in all this. The Holy Spirit is the one that's actually making this happen, um, drawing us into this relationship. But that's going a bit far with trying to press any kind of analogy, so we won't follow that too far. But the Father draws us to Jesus. It, there is no other way, but it doesn't stop us having free choice. When I preached this sermon uh, last week, someone pointed out afterwards that when Jesus was speaking on another occasion, he said, no one comes to the Father, but through me. We should really have got an arrow going the other way as well, um, because that's all part of the same uh, intimate relationship. It's a package deal. But what this does mean is that we're not forced into some kind of mould, though. We still have free choice. We're still able to come to Jesus from wherever we are. But when we do, it's because of the grace of God drawing us, even if we don't realise it. The key thing that I want to say to you is that whoever you are and whatever your background, you can come to Jesus. When people look into where they came from in terms of their ancestry, they can find all kinds of fascinating things. Sometimes they may find great heroes within their history. They might find that they are related to royalty or somebody really famous, and they can be proud of that. Sometimes they may find in their ancestry someone who is not a pleasant character, someone who they'd rather not be associated with. And discovering that you have an ancestor that was a criminal or something like that, well, that's not such a good thing. Um, but it's who you are. It's where you come from. And it doesn't matter in terms of our coming to Jesus, what our background is. It doesn't matter where we come from. It's where we get to that is important. Jesus welcomes all. This diagram is not intended to show that Jesus is restricting himself to saying, oh, we're all, I'm only interested in this group of people. The idea of predestination is nothing to do with God picking out people in advance and saying, well, I'm going to have you, you and you, but you, you and you, no, not interested, you can clear off. 
That's the wrong idea at all. God is wanting to draw everyone to Jesus, whoever we are, over here, over there, from a good background, from a bad background, from a, a broken childhood, from a happy childhood, from a life of trauma and distress, from a life of comfort and ease. Whoever you are, whatever your background, whatever your skin colour, whatever your gender, and these days that's much more fluid than just uh, male or female, whoever you are, coming to Jesus is perfectly okay. It doesn't matter where you come from. And that's the message I want to, to get across today. Do come to Jesus, wherever you are coming from. And if you haven't done that already, maybe today's the day, maybe now's the time. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we want to come to you because we know that you are the one who gives life. You are the bread of life. And in you and you alone, we find what truly nourishes us. We want to come, Lord, and be part of that. Help us to take those important steps. May the Father draw us into your presence, and may we find in you joy and love and peace. Lord, we come gladly. And Lord, we want the world to come to you. We want all the people of this world, especially those who are struggling with poor health or in terrible situations of war and violence or in deep poverty or under oppressive regimes, especially those, Lord. We, we want to come to you because we know that wherever we come from, you can support and strengthen and make that situation better somehow. So Lord, we pray for the world. We pray for those men and women who are so full of hatred that, that, that they injure others and cause untold harm and damage and death. Lord, change their minds, soften their hearts, bring them into your love. We pray for those who suffer and ask that you would comfort, strengthen and help them. We pray for your church throughout this land, especially as we return to something like how things used to be. May we also discover that in this time of uh, strange restrictions, we have found new ways of worship, new possibilities, new ways of doing things. May we put together the, the best of the old and the best of the new as we go forward in worship and service. And all these things, we pray in the name of Christ, our Saviour, our Friend, our Lord, the Bread of Life. Amen. Let's join in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And we're going to sing. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. And each verse has that words, those words of commitment. I came to Jesus. Let's sing together.
May the Lord go with you now through your life. May his blessing and his joy and his peace fill you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen.